Hello everyone, and welcome to today's TechSoup webinar. Thanks for joining us. My name is Crystal, and I'll be your host. Today's webinar is Library Websites on a Budget – Tools, Tips, and Tales. We have three guests joining us who will share their experience redesigning their library websites using free and open source software. We will be using the ReadyTalk platform for our meeting today. Please use the chat in the lower left corner to send questions and comments to the presenters. We will be tracking your questions throughout the webinar and will answer them at the designated Q&A section at the end. All of your chat comments will only come to the presenters, but if you have comments or ideas to share, we will forward them back out with the entire group. You do not need to raise your hand to ask a question. Simply type it into the chat box. Should you get disconnected during the webinar, you can reconnect using the same link in your confirmation email. You should be hearing the conference audio through your computer speakers, but if your audio connection is unclear, you can dial in using the phone number in your confirmation email. If you are having technical issues, please send us a chat message, and we will try to assist you. This webinar is being recorded and will be archived on the TechSoup website. If you are called away from the webinar, or if you have connection issues, you can watch a full recording of this webinar later. You will receive an archive email within 24 hours that will include a link to the recording, the PowerPoint slides, and any additional links or resources shared during the session. If you are tweeting this webinar, please use the hashtag TS4LIBS. We have someone from TechSoup live tweeting this event, so please join us in the conversation there. TechSoup connects nonprofits, charities, libraries, and foundations with tech products and services, as well as information so that you can make informed decisions about technology. During the past 17 years, TechSoup has distributed over 11 million technology donations to over 200,000 nonprofit organizations, libraries, and charities in over 60 countries worldwide. TechSoup offers mobile devices, refurbished computers, software, and services through their product donation program from vendors like Better World Wireless and Microsoft. For more information about TechSoup products and donations or services, uh, please visit TechSoup.org and click on Get Products and Services. TechSoup for Libraries addresses the specific technology needs of public libraries. TechSoup for Libraries gathers stories from public libraries about how they are utilizing technology and shares them via webinars, blog posts, and the TechSoup for Libraries monthly newsletter. Find these stories and sign up for our newsletter at TechSoupForLibraries.org. With that, we are ready to begin today's webinar, Library Websites on a Budget, Tools, Tips, and Tales. We will hear the stories of three libraries who have undertaken website design projects with limited resources, and they have survived to tell their tales. Please welcome our three guests for today's program. Amy Marshall is the director of the Craig Public Library, a small library on the remote Prince of Wales Island in Alaska. Amy has single-handedly redesigned her library website to be engaging and responsive to community interests. Karen Meir is the director of the Plattsmith Public Library located south of Omaha, Nebraska. Karen manages the library website as part of the city website, which she also maintains. Carol Geiger is the library IT manager for the Poudre River Public Library located in Fort Collins, Colorado. Carol recently led a complete redesign of the library website, which involved a committee of library staff and stakeholders. My name is Crystal Schimpf, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Assisting us with chat and Twitter, we have Jenny Meese and Ali Vizdikian of the TechSoup for Libraries team. We will be on Twitter using the at TechSoup for Libs handle. During this webinar, our guests will present a blend of tools, tips, and tales from their experience. Each guest has used a different free or open source platform to design their website. We will share the links to their website after the webinar is over as part of the archive. During the webinar, uh, they will, uh, we invite you to focus on the content they share in their slides. While we won't be able to give you a full training on how each tool works, we do hope to show you some of the features and considerations using each tool. We hope that through their stories, you learn a few new things to apply in your library. We will have time for questions after each presenter. Please send your questions using the chat as they arise, and we will address as many as we are able. 
If you ask a question that we are not able to answer during the webinar, we will follow up later via email with a response. You can also ask questions on Twitter. All of the resources discussed today will be available in the archive of this webinar. We will also include a handout with tips and resources compiled from the content we are sharing. Now, we wanted to learn just a little bit about why you are here today. So tell us, does your library's website need a makeover? Your responses are completely anonymous. Just select your response by checking the radio button, and then click Submit. I will give you a few seconds to respond here. You can see that many of you are here saying that you do, your, library does need a website, um, your library's website does need a makeover. And some of you aren't sure, and I understand that may be a tricky position. Uh, you, know, you may want to investigate that idea a little bit more, and this webinar may help you see that. I also know that some, some folks out there still in fact do need a website for their library, and that you may be designing one for the first time. You may have some just informational site up or something very um, uh, basic, but you're looking to develop a more full-fledged website. It looks like most people have responded who are probably going to, so we'll go ahead and close the poll and see that, wow, almost 70% of you are, are looking to um, give your library's website a makeover, and uh, more on top of that if we take into account those of you still creating a website for the first time or who maybe aren't sure. So um, hopefully you'll all get some new tips and ideas uh, to incorporate into your process today. Now we also wanted to find out how you feel about this topic. So tell us, how do you feel about working on your library's website? Um, you know, do you think it's pretty easy, or is it more of a struggle? Or is it the last thing that you'd really want to work on? I know there are some of us that maybe would rather do something else. And we can see as the responses are coming in, I'll give you just a second to think about that. Um, you're also welcome to share in the chat at any point. If you have commentary to share, please share it with us. And Allie will send that back out to the group if it's something that is maybe something everybody would appreciate, um, or if you have other ideas to share. And we can see that well, some of you are, are um, comfortable with web design and you have uh, an easy time with it, but uh, really the majority are uh, having a bit of a struggle or um, would, would rather work on another project entirely. So we'll go ahead and close the poll in just a second here so we can get the final results. And we'll go ahead and close it now. All right. Good. Well, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us on those uh, two topics. It helps us see um, why it is you've joined us today. And again, hopefully you'll get um, some, some tips and ideas regardless of where you are in the process. Now during this webinar you will learn about three free web design tools, and they're listed on the left. Um, but there are other free tools which are also used by many libraries. And we'll share some examples of other websites um, in the archive so you can see what other possibilities exist. We'll also share the links directly to these tools so you know where to find them. If you're relatively new to web design, we may be throwing around some terms today that are new, um, some tech jargon. And so here are a few of the terms I just wanted to go through that might be confusing if this is a new topic for you. And I'll just put them in context. We're talking about the, top, uh, the, the overall topic of web design, which is the creation of a website. Web hosting is the server or the location where the website content is stored and made available on the Internet. The content management system is the software that allows you to create edit, and publish content. And if you're more advanced at web design, you may also incorporate a coding language like HTML to make specific customizations within your CMS. We'll include these definitions in the archive as well, but hopefully that gives you some context as we go into the topic today. All right, well we've made it through our introduction, and it's time for me to hand over the controls to Amy Marshall, the Director of the Craig Public Library in Alaska, who will tell us how she has made a big impact with their new library website using Weebly. Amy? Thanks. I'm Amy Marshall. I'm the Director of the Craig Public Library. I've been the Director since 2010. I'm also now a member of the ARSL Board. Uh, my background is in archives and curation, so I was new to libraries when I, when I got this job. Uh, Craig is a very remote place. We're on Prince of Wales Island, so we're in southeast Alaska, one island over from Ketchikan. We have a 1,200 square foot building that serves 1,200 people in Craig, Alaska. We have 3,725 active patrons, so we also serve the uh, the greater Prince of Wales Island, and then we also have the influx of the summer visitors that, that come in every year. The only way in and out of Craig is by ferry or float plane. And this year, 
coming up, 2015, is the 80th anniversary of our library. So that's just to kind of give you a background of where Craig is and what Craig is and how small and remote it is. And uh, we do have uh, technological challenges here as far as broadband and things like that. Uh, before 2012, someone had remarked about a, uh, a website that had been started by a state technician and it was clunky. Our website was part of the city website and it was maintained using Publisher. And what you're seeing is my attempt, because this is the old website showing how it looked at, on the web and then also how it looked in the matrix that you would use to update it. But that's my attempt to add graphics in 2011 because before that it had been all text. It was difficult to update. I would rather have cleaned the public toilets a thousand times over than update this website because it was, it was clunky, it was almost unusable. In early 2012, our police department uh, broke away from the, the craigak.com website and went with their own server, and I said, I can do that. So I ended up getting a donation, and it would cover five years of domain registration, hosting, and a subscription to Weebly Pro. Now, Weebly Pro is one step up from the regular free Weebly. Weebly itself will give you up to 10 pages. Weebly Pro gives you unlimited pages. It costs about $7 a month, and it, for me it's well worth it. This is the website as it looked last week. Um, and I say last week because it's been updated since last week. It's so easy to update that either weekly or spur of the moment, uh, updates are just absolutely a snap because of the way it's designed. And if you're a small library with only one or two people that you can dedicate to a website, I can't recommend this highly enough. Um, I have past experience with HostMonster. I have two other websites that are, that are hosted on HostMonster, so that's why I went with them. I had experience in WordPress. Um, WordPress is a great platform. My WordPress site was hacked. That was about a week of a nightmare because I couldn't quite figure out how to fix what had happened. Um, the reason to go with Weebly were the design elements, the ease of updating, and there's no HTML. Um, I did have experience in PHP, which if you're going to add e-commerce to it, I'll just say that you have to know HTML and go in and, and fix every little thing in there. And it, it was just, that was also not really fun to update. And as I was saying, if you go with Weebly Pro, $7 a month, infinite pages, you have an ability to hide pages on your website. So you can just say, you can be done with, a, with an event or done with a program and you can hide it. But then it's always there. You can go back and you can access it. You can preload pages for publication. We're just starting our Hot Reads for Cold Nights. So I created a form and it was hidden on the page and then Saturday when we started our pre-registration I just took that little little eye off and it's live. So you can also do that which is really really handy. The thing I absolutely love about Weebly, I'm a scrapbooker, <laughs> it's like scrapbooking. Um, on the left there you'll see all the design elements. You can do text, there are uh, images, images with text, titles, so you can change the font, change the sizes. It's all drag and drop. There is a, a tool there that you can use to make columns. So you can do, you can set up columns and have two columns of, of different things and like that. So that really does make it easy. Um, social media uh, on WordPress, you have to go find a widget or a plugin to do this for you. Here, it's just a drag and drop. On the left, uh, two down. Here, you'll see something called uh, social plugins, and then they appear right up here. You just add in the websites. You can add more as you would like, and they'll all appear up there when you publish it. The other thing that's nice is that when you go and hit you, you can, you, it will save everything that you do, and until you publish it, it will be there so you can go back and work on it.
The other thing that this allows you to do very easily is slideshows. You can embed YouTube videos. Uh, there are plugins for things like a countdown clock. When we were uh, celebrating the launch of Orion, they have a programmable countdown clock that you can just drag right in there. It was a whole lot of fun, and when the mission got scrubbed, we just went and dragged in another one <laughs> and kept it going. Um, the forms feature is a whole lot of fun because it's just a snap. They're customizable. Under the forms option, you can choose to have them saved as a list that you can go back to the website and view as a list, or you can name the form, in, designate an email address, and have any answers to that form sent to that email address. So this is, this is what we use for Hot Reads for Cold Nights. It's how uh, remotely we sign kids up for the summer reading program. We have a comment form. We have a suggestion form. We have another form for uh, if you have suggestions for books or DVDs or materials that you would like, contact the librarian, ask us a reference question, anything like this, and it comes to an email that just makes it really handy and really easy. The other thing that it allows you to do is see how your website looks on a mobile device before you actually publish it and look at it <laughs> on a mobile device. So this allows you to build a mobile-friendly website because many people may be looking at your website on an iPhone or an Android. So it's really nice because you can have the iPhone view before you publish it. You can look at the Android view before you publish it. So that is, that's another thing that I really like about, about Weebly. Something outside of Weebly but that's really neat, uh, I use a photo online photo editor called PicMonkey, which back in the day used to be Picnic until Google bought them. Um, I'll also mention PicMonkey's offering a 30-day free trial if you want to try their uh, if you want to try their enhanced uh, their their enhanced products. Um, it's very easy to use. You can do collages. I do my flyers using PicMonkey. I think they're I think they're a really great thing for graphics to be able to pop on your website, and then also to put up around town if you're trying to get people's attention. This is where I am right now. I'm becoming more adventurous. I discovered this, uh, this group, which has a whole bunch of different uh, plugins, has a whole bunch of different uh, widgets that I can use on Weebly, and they're just one of a whole number of uh, offerings that they that they, uh, that they have put together, so they've been really helpful. And finally, it's nice to know you're never alone. These folks have tutorials, and you can sign up with them with your email. They will send it to your inbox, little YouTube videos that will help you design, you know, go beyond just the basic designs of Weebly, how to create sidebars, how to do different, different things. Uh, they were the ones who told me how to put a little map on the bottom of my website. So now I have a map so I know where people are accessing it from. So it's, uh, there are other, there are other uh, things out there that can help you from the basics. If you're just one person doing a website, I'm one person doing a website. But as I've gotten more comfortable, or if you have somebody who takes an interest and wants to volunteer to take over bits and pieces of it, you can. Uh, you can also get more fancy. <laughs> Great. Um, well, Amy, thanks for sharing um, all this information about the way you created your website using Weebly. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to um, cut you off there, but I think you were just maybe going to say, we, do we have any questions and answers? And we do. We've been getting some good questions in the chat, and I think we have a time, time for a few of them. Um, you know, and there's been actually a lot of uh, interesting conversation happening about other types of free softwares or, or so softwares that are free but have maybe a, a, an additional cost. And we are looking for maybe a bit of clarification about Weebly being both free and having a pro version. And one person asked, do you know if you can sign up for a free account and then lead that into a paid account if you know that you like it? Like, Can you transition into that? Have you experienced that? Yes, because I did sign up originally for, you know, I just got the original 
Weebly Starter was free with my with my uh, host monster hosting, and I quickly outran the ten pages that I knew that they were going to give me. And I thought, well, I know I'm going to go beyond the ten pages because that really is the only difference between Weebly Pro and Weebly. If you can keep it within ten pages, it's free. But you can start okay. out just the Weebly Starter and not pay anything, and then decide if you want to, if you want to add more pages. Great, great. Yeah, so you can start out with very little cost. Um, and then can you also clarify you know, that if, if you do pay for Weebly or whether you don't, um, can you clarify about the hosting? Is that something you have to pay for additionally? The hosting at HostMonster was uh, $3.95 a month. Uh, so yes, it was, it was separate. But a pretty low cost. So you found a good good site that uh, for for hosting that has a lower cost. So great. Well, that clarifies some of the cost things people were having. Now we had a good question come in um, from Janelle. Wanted to know is when you created your your website initially, did you start from scratch, or were you able to transfer some of the content from the old site into the new site? I tried to take what was good about the old site as far as the way the pages were organized and bring that in. Because our programs had changed so much because we actually were having more programs, the original front page would look a lot different than it would now. Uh, it used to be that, that we had a page that was dedicated to programming, and then we discovered that nobody could find that page because it was in the <laughs> drop-down menu. So we grabbed all that and put it on the front page and then had links to each program. as as each program needed one, which is how I went over the ten how I went over the ten pages. But yeah, I did take what was I take I did take what was good from the old publisher site and translate it over and then made changes as appropriate to make it a little less clunky because it was our our original site was very clunky. Great, great. Well, it's nice to know you could transition a little bit from the old content into the new and, um, and that you were able to adapt and make adjustments um, to the way people were able to find the content, which is I know something that um, Karen is going to talk about, so it's a nice segue in. Um, we've got a whole lot of other questions, and so Amy, um, you know, we'll forward those to you afterwards, or if you feel like answering some of them in the chat, um, that's an option as well. So for those of you who have more questions, please continue to send them. But we're going to move on to hear our second presenter at this time. So um, Amy, thank you again. Thank you. All right. And now it's time to hear from Karen Meir, who is the Director of the Plattsmouth Public Library in Nebraska. Karen is going to share some tips for working within a city website hierarchy and also working with the tool Joomla. Karen. Hi. Thank you. Um, yes, we are in um, a small town of 6,500 people. Um, that's actually about one quarter of the total county population. Uh, we are located about, an, about half an hour south of Omaha. We have nine, full, uh, nine staff, uh, but four of them are full-time, including myself. So it's a relatively small library, and um, you might sort of uh, discern from the picture of the library that, yes, we are a Carnegie Library. So we are nearing our 100th anniversary. Now, as uh, when I came to the city of Plasmouth uh, three and a half years ago, uh, I was uh, also given the opportunity to uh, help out with the web pages. And uh, we are using, with the city of Plasmouth, Joomla. It is like um, all of these programs, open source program. So there is no cost for um, the program itself. What we pay um, as a city, the whole city altogether pays $50 to a hosting company per month um, to host it. Now that company, because they also use Joomla for other sites um, that they manage, they are also a good reference uh, when I have questions, so that has helped out a lot too. The staff time for editing, um, the police department and the recreation department make their own edits, um, and then I do the edits for the library and the rest of the city and um, any menu changes, um, just because I didn't want to have to explain menus to everybody, <laughs> the, the other part-time people that were doing it. Um, Joomla was created in 2000. 
There are over 200,000 community users and contributors, so they um, are also very helpful through the forums and the discussion groups, uh, and I have turned to them occasionally as I learned Joomla. Um, I also had a um, varied background as far as website de um, design. The first library where I did a website was using front page. Uh, we moved that for a very short period of time to um, the Microsoft uh, web expression. I've uh, also used Dreamweaver and now Joomla and um, used a few others as I go along. But uh, that's sort of my background in how, we've, um, how I've worked with the websites. Specifically for the city of Plattsmouth, um, I wanted to show you several different slides to sort of see how you can work within a larger entity, whether that be a city, um, a university or school, or other agency where you are a part of a larger organization and um, use their overall web design. So at the top you can see that there is the city of Plattsmouth banner. Um, and a series of menu options um, at the top. This happens to be the city's home page. Uh, and so we have uh, an event that happened last night for uh, an open house. The side menu is specific to the generic city web pages. Um, as you go through and see these other pages, you'll notice that, for instance, the library's web page has the same top banner and top menu, but then we have added our own banner to represent the library, and that banner is on all library pages. So yes, we still identify with the city of Plasmouth, but we do make ourselves unique so that when somebody is on a library page, they know they're on the library's web pages. Um, similar to Amy, we had um, a uh, web page. The, the home page is our event page. So the first thing you want people to generally talk about and to know what's going on is your events. So uh, that's why we have uh, our event page at the top. I'll go a little bit into our menus in a short bit. Um, the Recreation Department, I will show, show you one other department. They have recently cre recreated their logo, and I'm very glad that they did because their previous logo was actually a collage of pictures. And it took up a lot of space at the top of the menu, uh, top of the page. Um, that made it almost imperative that in order to see any content, you had to scroll down to see um, the information they wanted to, um, to provide. So I'm glad that they did. Um, it's still a fairly high banner, um, but it's better than it used to be. So uh, that uh, is an improvement on their web pages also. Um, our site menu has the typical things that you might see on a library's web page, searching the catalog, um, the About Us or Contact Us. Um, we have um, various links. Some of the links are in text, as you can see on the top. Some are images, so the Download button. For people who know um, they just want to go to OverDrive, that link is right on our home page, and they can click on the image if they want to just make a quick link there. Um, we have several of our links that take us to another web page. The, some of the links, like the library newsletter, actually takes us to the um, document uh, for the newsletter. It's not on a separate page. It's just a link to the document. Or links to the outside resources, such as the OverDrive link or the Facebook link. So serve a variety of purposes depending on what your needs are. One thing that I showed uh, that was on the web pages that you saw earlier is um, the library location and hours. Um, one thing when the recreation department had a new director, he looked at the web pages and said, I really like the way the library shows their location and hours. Can you do that for the community center? And I said, sure. So I made another little, um, in Joomla, it's called a little module. Um, and I just said, here's what I want. I want the community center hours. And uh, so that was an instance where they said they found something on one web page. You can find something on other libra library web pages, other agency web pages. If you find something you like, go ahead and use it. Adapt it for your own pages. Um, and it's just another way. Uh, most of us are actually sort of proud if you sort of steal something that you find that you uh, like on our pages. For, the, for Joomla, it does give us a number of options. In creating web pages, you can make a long page. That means that your patrons have to scroll down to find the information sometimes. You can do shorter pages. 
um, which has the content mostly on the page, don't have very much scrolling, but then you're clicking more to actually get to the additional pages. One additional thing that Joomla provides is a way for us to create short articles. This happens to be a screenshot of um, the home page for the city. You'll notice that there are t tiny little um, white uh, arrows, so to speak, and these denote the separate little articles. So on these uh, articles, it's actually a way for me to create a small article and maybe reuse it. Um, anything that's put into Joomla, if uh, you can unpublish it at any time, you can also time it to be unpublished at a specific time. So for instance, I have uh, most cities have uh, a cleanup day. So we have one in the spring, one in the fall. I keep that uh, cleanup day information in there, and I just unpublish it when the event is done. In the spring, I've created it. In the fall, I need to change it. So I just change spring to fall, change the dates, change the link to the new flyer, because the basic information is there. We're doing a spring cleanup or a fall cleanup. Here's where you can call. Here's where you drop it off. Um, and so Joomla allows us to say, put this up, publish it starting you know, right away, stop publishing it the next day after the event. And then you don't have to come back and remember to take anything off. When you want to go back and reuse it for the next season, it's already there. You just make some minor changes and republish it. So those are very helpful. The um, one thing that we um, are obviously doing is using an institutional, a city website, but we are branding it. Each department brands it so that it looks like their own. And then um, within Joomla, you just tell it where you want those um, banners to show up. So we tell the library ban we identify that the library banners show up on the library web pages, the police banners show up on the police pages, and etc. If you don't have uh, other options like the sub menus, the side menus identify something that's specific to your department, or if it's just simple um, changing the colors um, so you can look a little bit different than your larger institution. The other thing that Joomla does is it creates a very long web address, as you can see. Um, what we've done is created shortcuts. So we have platsmithlibrary.org. That's all we have to put on our promotional material. And when you type that in, it automatically goes to the Joomla longer version of the web address. Um, we've done a similar um, procedure with a variety of departments. So the long second one that you see there um, actually represents that um, the long web address for the uh, recreation department actually can be put on their promotional material as plasmaorg slash rec. We also have plasmaorg slash fire, slash EMS, et cetera, um, anything to make it easier for your marketing materials. The other thing um, that I would recommend is always try to make it simple for your people to find the information. As you can see, we're on the police department um, web page. On the um, right, the they actually have a link to animal control. Their actual department name, I think, is Humane Department, um, but it is a part of the police department. However, uh, we decided we are not going to strictly go with what the city identifies as a department. So the department includes things that we would normally think of as a department, but it also includes animal shelter. Um, here we call it animal shelter because we thought, what do people call this? They don't have to know that in order to find something about the humane department or animal shelter or animal control that they have to go to the police department. We want them to be able to find it so it's straight under animal shelter. Similar thing with the recreation department and the senior center. Senior center is part of the recreation department. Nobody's going to look to um, in the recreation department. So it's best to call it what the people are looking for and to make it as easy as possible to find it. Um, the actual back end of Joomla, once you log in, there is a control panel that lets you go in and add articles, um, manage the articles that are already in there. There is a section where you can actually say, identify which articles are on the front page. 
um, and dealing with the, um, the media and the other things that are going on uh, behind the scenes. One um, page here shows what the library's um, uh, web pages. Um, this is our main home page. And so you can see that it looks very similar to a word processor. We happen to work with tables, so you'll actually see something that looks like a table. Um, and it's an easy way to add tables by using a drop down, just say how many columns and rows you want, delete a table, um, add rows before or after, and delete them, or same with columns. The images are easy to just find a one little click um, icon and go in there and edit the image. Um, you can actually look at the source code if you want to. The, um, the links, everything is made pretty easy to find what you're looking for. And the, the uh, common, you know, change your um, font sizes, uh, things like that. So uh, it's fairly easy to manage. You can easily say publish it or don't, put it on the front page or don't. Um, and then there are categories for how we want to categorize um, the information that's on there. But it's um, a fairly easy program to use and um, uh, works easily for us. And like I said, um, when I have questions, I ask um, either the company that hosts our um, web pages. And um, the other advantage is we did talk briefly someone about, uh, about hacking. Yes, the city's web pages had gotten hacked once by the, someone in the Middle East. I did trace it back there. So um, that hosting agency earned their money when they were trying to get that back for us. So um, that's a little bit about Joomla and what it looks like to do um, the editing. Great. Karen, thanks for sharing that with us, and definitely a contrast to um, the single website that uh, Amy created and a very different tool. Um, and we are, uh, only have time for about one question, although we have a few others, so I'll let you respond to them later. But the, the one question I'd like to know now is, um, does Joomla have upgrades, and is it difficult to install those upgrades um, so that as new security patches or things are, uh, come out, um, how easy it, is it to deal with that with Joomla? Uh, Joomla has been upgraded um, a couple of times since I've been here. Um, the hosting company does that for us. Um, and if uh, I, the couple of times that it was done, I did not have any problems. Um, there were improvements on how to do some things, uh, nothing that really took us out of service for any length of time. Great, great. Well, it sounds like it's a tool that's relatively easy to use and has quite a bit of functionality. And so if you have more questions about Joomla or about Karen's website, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll follow up with you later on. Uh, but now we have our third presenter and it's time to move on. Uh, so thank you again, Karen. And now it's time uh, to hear from our last presenter, Carol Geiger, who is going to talk to us about the process of redesigning a website within a larger library district. The Poudre River Public Library is located in Fort Collins, Colorado, and had a team of staff work on redesigning the website using the Zurb Foundation Framework. Carol, tell us all about it. Hi, this is Carol Geiger. I'm the Library IT Manager at the, public, uh, the Poudre River Public Library District in sunny Fort Collins, Colorado. It's sunny and cold. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is a little different than the previous one, so less technical, more about process. We are a larger library, so uh, we call ourselves medium-sized. I, th I think that's what we're usually referred to as. But we're very busy. We have patrons with high expectations both for in-house and online resources. We have a large number of online users. Uh, th the thing they like to do the most, of course, is place holds. They use our databases. They download e-content. We have approximately 80 FTE, so we are uh, larger of the three that are presenting today. What did our website look like before? Well, here is a screenshot of what our our website used to look like. We've used it for we had used it for about six years. It was designed by a third party marketing firm, and we we had to fit everything within this within this design. A couple of the uh, the problems that we had with this design was one uh, the the font 
always seemed too small, and we had a lot of complaints about that. And it's not a responsive design, so we actually had a separate mobile site. Uh, but with our new website, we have them both in one site, and I'll show you more about that in a moment. So why else would we redesign our site besides just the font size and the responsive design? Well, we wanted a modern look and feel, modern functionality, and the modern expectation is that no training is needed, that it is intuitive to use. And that's what we wanted to, to bring to the new website. We created a team, of, a core team of six people. Uh, in a in a bigger library like ours, we had a need for a defined process. Um, planning was important. None of us on the team had done this big of a project before with the web. We hadn't built something from the ground up before, so it was kind of scary going into it. And at times we were confident, and at times we were just scared. But most days I just put on a good face and led the team through. We picked a good team of skilled, motivated staff. We also had more help. Uh, since we have so many, we actually have about 160 people on staff. Uh, many are part timers. And they were involved in various stages of the project, either helping with layout or content, testing. We have a couple of cool teams at our library. One is the Tech Heads. And our collection advisory team were very helpful on uh, especially the sub-pages, public desk staff, and circulation managers, and of course everyone else. We started with a good objective statement. It, it helped us to refocus whenever we got off track. So our statement was create a patron-centered, responsive web design that is engaging, easy to use, and accessible to our customers and their devices. And whenever we were veering away from that, um, we would just go back to the statement. I had it posted uh, in my office. I brought it to every meeting. It was in all of our notes, all of our agendas. We had this at the top to remind us of what we were doing and why we were doing it. The first thing we did after we got our objective statement was uh, put together an alpha mock-up in what's kind of above the fold, you might say. I know this isn't that easy to read, but we had to decide really what was going to be the major layout. We were going to have a header here that was going to be consistent on as many pages as possible throughout our site. We wanted to decide what was going to remain the same and what was going to change. The header remains the same all the time except for the hours, which are uh, dynamic. And then we wanted some places where we could change it up. The engagement box here has some scrolling items, and that's changed sometimes weekly, sometimes daily. It depends. Um, we have two highlight sections where we can highlight summer reading program or particular programs or whatever. The teen and kids links, those, are, uh, those remain the same all the time. So this is like above the fold. Below the fold, we wanted to have a footer that has pretty much our everything. So people can find there, if it isn't above the fold in that kind of 95% of what people usually do, it's probably down here in the bottom. Like if you are a member of a book club and you want to go to the book club's page, you'll probably find that link and learn where it is and use it often. We also have this featured jackets area, and that, that is used on many of our web pages besides just the home page where uh, different staff members are responsible for um, loading up those, those jackets through a, a web app that we have for our content providers. So this is what it looks like today. 
This is the, this is the final product. A couple of things I wanted to point out was we, uh, we wanted it to be patron-centered. We wanted the top, the top activities that people do are right up here at the top. It's above the fold. We wanted it to be engaging so we have good use of color. We have a graphic designer on staff. We want it to be easy to use, so we wanted to do things like, well, most people expect a search box to be in the upper right or upper left or someplace. And we chose the upper right and have a kind of a multi-function search box up here. The logo is on the left. That's a common spot for a logo. One of the things is that people don't get trained on how to use your website, so you want it to be as intuitive as possible. We used color also and plain language. Uh, for example, on our old site, research was e-resources, which was a term that was useful some time ago, but research has become the more commonly used term, and it's, and it's plainer language. And it's also a green button. All of these buttons are different colors, so when we're talking to customers, we can, say, we can say either on the phone or even in person, we can say, well, click on the green button. That's easier than saying, click on the button that says research on it. One of our branches is at a community, on a community college campus, and uh, these colored tabs were actually an idea from our community college librarian. Um, and it was great. It, it, it has been – because it, our first iteration, I think we just had different shades of brown. And it was, it was really helpful to have a different color of tabs. Another thing we did was uh, by using the Zurb Foundation framework, we're able to have a responsive web design. And this is what a desktop version would look like. And then when you make it smaller, it's the mobile version. Uh, yes, you can have many different versions in between, but we decided to concentrate on just sort of what I would call large and small, and this being what shows on a mobile version. Timeline. Well, this was pretty aggressive timeline for a library of our size where you have to really incorporate a long history plus many staff members and patron needs, staff needs. Uh, you have one website that is for all, both staff and public needs. And we were charged with getting this done as you know, in a, in a timely fashion. So we had our first meetings in January. By April we had our alpha mock-ups done, many meetings in between there. And then through May, June, and July, we, our web designer did a lot of development and we did a lot of creating of the sub-pages, content. The test site went up in August and we actually launched our new site the end of September. So we're, we're very happy. We're also happy that we have what is a fairly nimble website that we can change and adapt as time goes on. In the uh, supplemental materials that I think Crystal either sent out or will be sending out, has some, a small schematic of, of our website. And that that may help you also to see uh, what the different products were that we used and on what different servers. Great. I think that's um, about it. Yeah, Carol, thank you for sharing um, so much information about the process and, and making decisions about uh, content and what to include. Um, uh, on different parts of the page and what your priorities were. And I can tell that you really put a lot of thought into that, um, that part of the process, really determining and, and having an intention around it, and um, just kind of referencing back to the fact that you had those um, 
objectives that you came up with at the beginning. Um, and yes, we do have a handout which includes quite a bit of information about your redesign project. Um, so Carol um, has shared a, a handout with us which you will get in your archive materials that just talks about um, her library's process. Um, now, Carol, I know you didn't want to talk too much about the technology, and we certainly don't want to get into the nitty-gritty technical questions, but can you just tell everybody again what the um, software was that you used and, and a little bit about how it's maybe more involved than um, you know, the Weebly or the Joomla that we've seen so far, just to give people a sense of what it was like? Sure. Um, I, I'm not the web developer. Uh, I, I manage the web developer, but I'm not the web developer. But what she used was um, the Zurb Foundation Framework, which is really a, a bunch of customized JavaScripts and CSS that you put on a server. And then you use PHP and HTML pages. The, the framework is a grid system that can be used to help you with responsive design. Beyond that, it is our design. So we didn't have a content management system that we used. Uh, the, the pages that are static are done, or, or the static portions of the pages are done by our web developer. But then she also developed some web apps which are kind of like little mini CMS. They're, uh, they're used to, for other you know, non-technical people to add content to like the kids page and the teens page and the sliders. We have a little slider app so the marketing person can uh, put in whatever pictures she wants in the slider app. And uh, the book jackets, there's a little app for that. So all the content providers like the business librarian, the children's librarian, the marketing person, they all use that, those different apps to push content into the site. Other than that, there's not, we, we didn't use a single product. And um, our main site is hosted by the city of Fort Collins. We're in their, their network, their computer network. Great, great. Well, that gives us some idea of what that technology was like. Um, we're also getting people asking, how is that spelled? And I'll tell you right now, it's Z-U-R-B. Um, and we have included a link to that in the um, archive materials, which you'll get within about a day, So, um, along with the recording of the webinar. So keep an eye out for that um, in your archive. And um, Carol, thank you very much. We do have to wrap up at this point, but I just want to say thank you for sharing all of this information. Thank you. All right. And, um, and for those of you, we just have a few announcements which I think you'll be pretty interested in before we wrap up. And I'll ask you to stay on the line. We'll have a brief survey at the end. Uh, but just a couple of quick announcements um, before we go. Now the first one being that uh, immediately following this webinar and for the next two hours, uh, TechSoup is hosting a Soup Chat uh, live Q&A with Yan Toledano who is kind of a web guru. And you can field, uh, send him any questions and he will field them. He'll be talking about nonprofit web design. So um, I know you may have some more general questions than what we addressed today um, or even more specific questions. Uh, send them your way. And Ali just put a link to that in the chat. Um, and then if you did have questions that we weren't able to get to uh, directed to our presenters, we'll be following up with you via email with those responses in the next couple of days. A few other upcoming events that you might be uh, interested in. Tomorrow there will be another web chat, this one on the future of mobile uh, with Better World Wireless. On Thursday, January 8th, uh, you can learn about the TechSoup donation program uh, for donations specific to libraries. And then on Wednesday, January 21st, it will be our next TechSoup for Libraries webinar um, talking about library volunteers assisting with public technology training or public technology assistance. So that will be a good one. Stay tuned for more details about that um, through the TechSoup for Libraries newsletter and other avenues. Um, well, with that, I think we are ready to wrap up. Um, we want to say thank you to ReadyTalk for being our webinar sponsor today. ReadyTalk is a tool that can help you collaborate and share information. Do you host webinars and online meetings at your library? Get more information about this product donation program at TechSoup.org. Uh, like I said, please stay on the line and take a brief survey about today's webinar. Uh, thank you to our guest speakers for sharing their experience, and thank you all for joining us. Have a great day.